Good evening, everyone. Huh? Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Who's with us? Who's with us? Jeffrey with us. Stephen with us. Good, Stephen with us. Who else? Let me just see who else with us. Aurel with us, Louis with us, Ivor and Anthony with us, Hilton with us. Good. Who else? Who else? Let's see who's oh, coming. Dr. Les joining us. Okay, Dr. Les with us. Good evening, Dr. Les. How are you? Shalom, Rav. How are you? Uh, Shalom, Rav. How are you? Baruch Hashem, how are you? You look happy and you look handsome. You have a nice haircut. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> My wife did it. <laughs> Rav, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Rav, um, yeah, it's so much better than last last week. You know, we were cut off quite a bit. But there's been some amazing developments. They, I'll just quickly mention a few because there's so much to unpack. But um, they're having the hostage um, discussions. And um, the head of the Mossad has gone. Uh, you know, to represent Israel, but the demands are outrageous on the Hamas side. And what's absolutely incredible, Rob, if you see any news broadcast, they always say ceasefire, ceasefire. Even when they had this talk we saw with the DA, and people say we need a ceasefire, they don't say about returning the hostages. If they would return the hostages now, in, in the next five minutes, there'd be a ceasefire immediately. So the blame isn't put on Hamas, it's put on Israel. And also with the uh, with the food, you know, uh, Hamas are the ones that are uh, hampering the delivery of the food or stealing the food. And they just showed today that there was Hamas that were shooting on Palestinians who were trying to get a lot of the food because they're stealing it. But I'll tell you something which is very, very worrying. I don't know if it's come to South Africa, if you saw it at the uh, Academy Awards. Uh, Jonathan Glazer, who was the director of uh, the zone of interest, and I've actually seen that film. I saw it at the Jerusalem Cinematheque. They had it at the film festival, and it's about a um, the house on the grounds of Auschwitz with Rudolf Huss, it's not Hess, it's Huss, and there's Rivka Abrams. She's a lady who lives here in Yerushalayim, and I actually did an interview with her. And her grandfather was the one that captured this Rudolf Huss, and he had in his possession. The, the book, they had a book when visitors would come to the house, they would write inside the book what a wonderful lunch they've had. And this is the house on the grounds of Auschwitz, which the film is based on. And he actually uh, donated uh, it to Yad Vashem. He donated. I can hear you. Sorry. Uh, sorry, he I'm going to okay. mute immediately. Sorry about that. Yeah, continue. Right. He, they, he donated the book to Yad Vashem. Now, Rivka Abrams, that was her grandfather, she actually married Jonathan Pollard. It's like a second marriage. And I know her pretty well. I know her quite well. And I know Jonathan quite well. And I was had the scoot to go to Yad Vashem to film when they showed the original. It's one of the most prized positions at Yad Vashem. And I can send you that video. It's actually quite incredible because Yad Vashem allowed me to make it public. And the curator of that part of the museum, it's in the archives. If you go underground, it's, it's, it's very, very precious and it's very well protected, is Bettina. She's actually a German who converted. And we did an interview with her as well. So I'll send it to you, Rav. You will not believe and you can share it amongst our listeners because it's actually quite incredible. But what was very sad is what he said at the Oscars was not only disgraceful, it was such an attack on, on the memory of every single Holocaust survivor. He said that he renounces uh, his Jewishness and that he compared what's happening to Gaza with the, with the Holocaust. It's outrageous. It's, it's just, it's hard to, to comprehend that a Jew could say such a, a shocking statement like this. Now, there'd be many organizations, the ADL, the um, Mervyn Heyer, um, many Holocaust survivors themselves have said that what he did was was an affront to Judaism and an affront to the memory of those who, who perished in the Shoah. And his own, one of the directors in his film, um, Danny Cohen, has distanced himself from those statements. And the Auschwitz Museum, and we should all be aware of this, have commended him. So a lot of non-Jewish uh, museums 
are thinking, they think that this is wonderful what he's saying because the guilt that they had is now put on the Israelis. They said, look, if the Israelis did what we did, so we're not so guilty. So we all have to just be so aware of, of what's out there. And it's so sad when you have fellow Yidden that have, are basically have betrayed us and are treacherous, it's like traitors. And for the memory, every single Holocaust survivor that I've ever interviewed, when I ask him for a message, living in Israel and the state of Israel is paramount. They said, thank God we've got our own country. Thank God we don't have to rely on, on the nations that never allowed us to enter. And uh, I just want to end off with uh, Sully that you once gave a share on. He wrote once on Facebook, he said, Vahisha Amda, and he said, if only we had our country 10 years before, my mother and my brother would not have been murdered. In other words, if we had the state of Israel 10 years before 1939, the Jews would have had a place to go to. But because we never had it and the world closed their doors, including South Africa, including Australia and Canada and all the countries, so look what happened. But Baruch Hashem today, we do have our own country and we have Hashem who has um, who will protect us. And just as you say, and we'll say in Pesach, Vihisha Amda, Hashem Yatsilainu, He will save us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, Rabotai, as we announce, we're going to continue with the last part of the Megillah. We're going to bring different commentary on the Megillah, Be'ezrat Hashem. But first, I would like to dedicate the Sheol to Bela Bataron, that tonight is her your side. That's uh, Cynthia um, Kaplan's mother. Also, I would like to dedicate the show in the soul of Esther Kaden Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma, Tamar Bat Zeava, Itan Ben Keren, Vavishai Nae, Malka Regina Bat Joya, Yaakov Salomon Ben Parha, Reparha Bat Salha, Nishmatan Tietz, Rura Betur Haim. Also, I would like to dedicate the Sheol for all the Jewish people that need the Rafa Shlema, amongst them the soldier, the member of the police, the member of the security forces, okay? And amongst all of those, you are Rabbi Ben Parcha, Rabbi Moshe Ben Bayabati, Rabbi Moshe Ben Devorah, Rabbi Shlomo Yehuda Ben Dalia, Rabbi Avraham Ben Maria, Devorah Bat Esther, Sorry, guys, there's some noise. I need, I need to... Okay. Dvora bat Esther, Shaina Keila bat Hana, Mordechai David ben Lea, Yehuda Hillel ben Shulamit Lea, Haim Nahum ben Pesareza Kohen, Baruch ben Sarah Hiena, Ahuva Kaden bat Tali Esther, Lea bat Rachel, Pesach Hitchak ben Ela, Ayala Eden bat Rivka, Natalie Malka bat Sarah Rivka Tal, Yehuda, Ben Eliezer, Meir Ben Yehuda, Ariel Ben Shilat, Uri Ben Yael, Hananiah Shalom Ben Avigdor. Please God, Refua Shlema to all of them. Amen. Okay, Be'ezrat Hashem, Na'asev Na'atzliach, Be'ashem Alenu, Be'rachamav Yarviach. Okay, last Sunday we finished chapter 6. Today we're going to do a few verses from chapter 7. So we're going to start, uh, Jeffrey, in yep. chapter 7, verse right. 6. Verse 6. Good. And let's see what Esther Malka said to King Ahasuerosh about Haman. Okay, and she said like this. Vatomer, ish, tsar, ve'oyev, Haman arashaze. Okay. והמן נבעט מלפני המלך והמלכה. And Esther said, an adversary and an enemy, this wicked Haman. Haman trembled in terror before the king and queen. What exactly is happening here? On a shot of the Dvarim, it sounds like Esther Amalka actually speaking to King Ahasuerus and saying, you see that man? He's adversary. He's a wicked. He's an enemy of the Jewish people. That's pshat of the Dvarim. But Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Megillah say completely different. Hazal in the Gemara Masechet Megillah 
in page 16, one. Look what Hazal say. Hazal say that when Esther spoke, she spoke and she appointed a finger or two at King Ahasuerus. At King Ahasuerus, she appointed a finger. That means that she say, you, she wanted to say, you are a wicked, you and a man. You both enemies, you both adversaries of the Jewish people. Hazal and Gemara say, but came an angel immediately and pushed the finger to point at Haman Arasha. Come the Gaon Mivilna, the Gaon Mivilna. Rabbi Eliyahu ben Shlomo. Rabbi Eliyahu ben Shlomo born around 304 years ago. Some people say that he born in Vilna. Some people say, no, he born in Lita. It doesn't make a difference. The Mefarshim explains, say, the Gaon Mevinna like this. He said, I don't understand. Esther, you come to ask the king of Hashverosh to help you to get rid of Amad. And you suddenly are pointing a finger at the king of Hashverosh. I don't understand, say Hazal and Gemara. Say the Gaon Mevinna, I don't understand what's happening here. You come to ask the help of King Ahasuerus to get rid of Haman Arasha. But you're pointing a finger at Ahasuerus, the person that you want his help. What's happening here? Said the Gaon Mevimna, I'll tell you what's happening. I'll explain to you. Esther Malka was a tzaddeket. Esther Malka was everything that she do she always thought that she's speaking to Akadosh Baruch Hu. So when she wanted to point at King Ahasuerus, that means that she was talking to the Almighty. She was saying to Almighty, you see these two? These two enemies of the Jewish people. they the one that want to annihilate us. She was speaking to who? To the Almighty, said the Gaon Nebilna. And that's what happened. So from here, said the Gaon Mivilna, now you can understand what Hazal is saying in the Gemara in Masechet Megillah 16.1. What they're saying to you, that Esther Amalka was all the time, all the fought with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That she, who she was speaking to? To a Melech. Mi a Melech? The king, the king, Malko Shel Olam the king of the universe, the almighty. And that's what's happened here. And that's who she was speaking really. But then she says something very interesting in the Pasuk. Look what it said there. Haman, Harasha, Haze. This wicked Haman. And all the Mepharshim have the same question. Many of the Mepharshim, not all, many of the Mepharshim ask. They say, wait a minute, I don't understand. Esther, you saying Haman Rasha this wicked Haman? We know that was only one Haman. In a fish that you made, you invited King Ahasuerus and Haman. That means only three people was there besides the serving. Who was there? You, the king, and Haman Rasha. So why did you have to say Haman Rasha Hazeh? This Haman Rasha. Ask the Mepharshim. The Mepharshim explained like this, that Esther Malka said to King Ahasuerus, to King Ahasuerus like this, Bechol dor vador omdim alenu lechalotenu. In every generation, there is people that try to annihilate the Jewish people. Aval HaKadosh Baruch Hu matzilenu miyadam. But the Almighty, okay, saved us from the hand of the enemies of the Jewish. He doesn't allow them to annihilate us. Say the Mepharshim, you know what she said? In this generation, you know who tried to annihilate the Jewish? Haman Rasha said, this, this, this Haman that's sitting with us now in a feast, he's the one in our time that tried to annihilate the Jewish people. That means in every generation, you'll find people that try to annihilate us until the Mashiach come. 
But in this generation, you know who's that wicked person? This, this person that not only that he's the enemy of the Jewish people, he's a wicked person. This Haman that's sitting here with us in peace. That's how the Mepharshim explained the verse. So by Ezrat Hashem, when we read this verse in the Megillah on Purim, we'll understand what's hiding behind it. Let's go to verse 9, because verse 7 have, uh, verse seven have uh, chapter 7 have only 10 verses. So I decide to take it a bit slow, a bit easy. And it says here in verse 9, look what it says here. Vayomer harvona ehad min hasarisim lifne hamelech gam haetz asher asa aman lemordechai asher diber tov al hamelech omed bebet aman gavoa hamishim ama vayomer hamelech teluhu alav. Then Harbona, one of the chamberlains in attendance of the king, said. Furthermore, the 50 cubit high gallows, which Haman made for Mordechai, who spoke good for the king, is standing in Haman's house. And the king said, hang him on it. Very interesting verse. We have to understand what's happening here. Harvona saying to the king, Ahasuerus, Haman Rasha, made 50 amma, that means 25 meter long, yellow. To hang who? Mordechai. But Mordechai spoke good about the king Ahasuerus. What did Ahasuerus do? Made the Vedic hang Haman. We have to understand what made king Ahasuerus suddenly to hang Haman Arasha. So Rabotai, the first thing that we have to remember, I'm going back to the beginning of the Megillah. Who was the one that given the advice to kill Vashti Amalka? Haman Arasha. When Haman Arasha given the advice, the king Ahasuerosh was drunk. But when the end of a finish, Vaiskor Amelech Ahasverosh is Vashti Amaska. He remember Vashti Amalka. So he remember also who given him the advice. Immediately the grudge starting to be built. Amelech Ahasverosh, the king Ahasverosh, starting to hate Aman. But in this verse, come Harvona, that was one of the chamberlain of the king, one of the minister that served the king. Actually, wasn't a minister. He was one of the serving. And he said like this, and it say in the Targum, and I saw it in also uh, in, a, in the name of the book, uh, Yosef Leka. Yosef Leka has a book that is commentary on Megillat Esther that been written by Rabbi Eliezer Ashkenazi, Ben Elia Kohen, he born around 511 plus minus 511, if I'm not mistaken, years ago, in the city of Prague in the Czech Republic, okay? And Rabbi Eliezer Ashkenazi says something extraordinary. He say that Harvona actually here enticing the king Ahasuerus to get rid of a man. What did he say to him? He said to King Ahasuerus like this, Johannes, your majesty, okay? You know, Haman Rasha is asking to hang who? Mordechai. What? On a galley that 50, on a, on a galley that is 50 amat, 25 meter. That galley, where is it? in his house. But, Your Majesty, Mordechai, a Yehudi, he spoke good about you. As a matter of fact, he saved your life from your own bodyguard that planned to poison you. 
That's me. That mm, Haman Rasha is holding grudge to Mordechai Yehudi to save your life. He's not hanging Mordechai because he's Jewish. No, 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 no. Because Mordechai told the stair, and the stair told you, and you know, and Mordechai saved your life. He's holding grudge against him. And to prove it, Mordechai never been rewarded until you told a man to walk with him around the street. Already the penny drop. Okay? What is King Ahasuerus say immediately? Hang a man. Now it's time to hang a man. So that's mean that Haman, a king Ahasuerus say, he also was in a plot to kill. That's mean that it wasn't only Big Tan of Teresh. It was also Haman. It was Haman, Big Tan of Teresh that planned to kill King Ahasuerus. And that's why he say immediately to hang Haman. Come the Gaon Mivin. The Gaon Mivin now bring another interpretation for this verse. And he say like this. From that, that Harvona said to a king Ahasuerus, Gam in And here also the gallow. What does it mean? Gam hine. Here also the gallow. Said the Gaon Mivilna, Harvona said to King Ahasuerus, and he hinting to him that Haman say that this gallow, that they're going to hang Mordechai a Yehudi, it's not only just for Mordechai. He's planning to plan you, to hang you, your majesty. Ah, gam, hine ha'etz, in here also the gallow. Say, King Ahasuerus, I see what that Haman Rasha planning is. Not enough that he had a plot together with Big Tan Bateresh. Now he also want to hang me. Say King Ahasuerus immediately to hang a man. And now we can understand that this what Haravona say, and that's why it say in the end. Gam harvona zachor latov. What it means harvona zachor latov that spoke good, that enticed the king Ahasuerus to hang a man arasha. And that show you gratitude of Esther and Mordechai when they wrote the Megillah. Okay, let's move on with your permission to verse eight, to chapter eight in verse eleven. And here we see something very interesting. The verse says like this: "Asher natan hamelech la'yudim, asher bechol er va'ir leikahel ve'la'amod al nafsham ve'la'ashmid ve'la'harog u'le'abed et kol hel am u'medina hatzarim otam taf ve'nashim u'shlalam la'boz." Okay, this is, this is discussing the letter. And so, to the effect that the king had permitted the Jews of every single city to organize and defend themselves, to destroy, slay, and exterminate every armed force of any people or province that threatened them, along with their children and women and to plunder their possessions. Okay, here we see something very interesting. And Rabbi Avraham Ibn Ezra, Rabbi Avraham Ibn Ezra, born in the city of Toledo, 935 years ago in Spain. There is a new commentary that they found that he wrote on the Megillah. <clears throat> Sorry. And he asked a question, and he said, I don't understand, Mordechai, 
Why do you have to run to kill, to destroy, to annihilate the enemies of the Jews? All you have to say to save the Jews. No, but Mordechai didn't say that. Mordechai asked the king to write on the letters that they sent. What did he say? To kill, to annihilate, and to take all the spoil. What's the Hedushia? Why did he say not to kill the Jews? Say the Eben Ezra, Rabbi Abraham Eben Ezra, Rabbi he said, Mordechai, he wanted to change the letters that Haman sent, the second letters, letters. But him and Esther, when they approached the king Ahasuerus to tell him to change, King Ahasuerus said to him, listen, I can't change it. I given the ring to Haman Arashah, and he wrote what he wrote, I can't change it. Say, Mordechai, in that case, if you allowed me I'm going to change the letter differently. And I'm going to write something else. Said Rabbi Avram Ibn Ezra like this. Mordechai, a Yehudi, was very smart. He was the head of the Sanhedrin. We know. He spoke 70 languages. He wasn't such a simple. And he had the Holy Spirit. He said to King Ahasuerus, let me handle it. King Ahasuerus said in that case, you handle it, no problem. Mordechai Yehudi took the letter. What did he wrote on the letter? He wrote like this. He said that we have to kill and to annihilate what? All the enemies of the Jews. But Haman Rasha, he wrote, he changed what the king told him. And he wrote to kill the Jews. And to prove it, that what I'm saying is right, look, Haman Rasha bin Hain. Why? Because the king found out that Haman Rasha changed what the king told him. In that case, let's write that to kill, to destroy, to annihilate completely the enemies of the Jews. And that's going to be the proof. Sir Rabbi Avram Ibn Ezra, from here you see how clever was Mordechai Yehudi. He came to King Ahasuerus and find a solution how to change the letters that Haman wrote. Haman wrote on the letter to kill, to destroy all the Jews, to annihilate them, and to take all the spoil, to take all their money, everything that belonged to them. Say Mordechai to King Ahasuerus, I'm going to write to kill all the enemy of the Jewish people. And to prove to it that that's what was written in the second letter, it's that, that to kill all the enemy of the Jews. Because when the King Ahasuerus found out that Haman obeyed what the king told him, didn't want to listen to him, he changed. Immediately the king hanged him on a gallow. Therefore, I'm telling you now in these letters, in the two letters, that here's a proof that what Haman wrote is a lie. I'm telling you that we have to kill, to destroy, to annihilate all the enemies of the Jews and to take all the money and to kill from tough venashim, to kill young and women. And that's what is it mean, Mordechai Tzadik, Mordechai Yehudi, said to King Ahasuerus, let me handle it, I'll change it. You just leave it to me, and I will handle that case. And we see from here, how Mordechai Yehudi done it with smartness. Let's go to chapter 9. In chapter 9, verse 5, we see something interesting. Look what it says here in verse 9. Vayaku hayudim bechol oivehem makat herev vaherek vaovdan vayasu beson ehem kirtsonam. 
And the Jews struck at all their enemies with the sword, slaughtering and annihilating. They treated their enemies as they pleased. What did it mean they treat the enemies as they please? I saw a beautiful commentary of Rabbi Shmuel de Ozida. Rabbi Shmuel de Ozida, just for interest, he born in the city of Tzfat 479 years ago. He was a student of Ariya Kadosh. Okay, and he was during the times of the Ramak, Rabbi Moshe Kordoviro, you know, the, the great Kabbalistic. And he wrote a book, Midrash Moel, the famous Midrash Moel that we all know. He wrote also a Midrash on Megillat Esther. And in a Midrash he said, what it mean as they wish? What does it mean as they wish? Say Rabbi Shmuel de Ozida. You know what it mean as they wish? To the enemy? That the Jewish people done exactly what the enemy wished to do to yeah. them. Yeah. That's mean. That the enemy wanted to kill, to annihilate, to destroy the Jewish people. Exactly that, what the Jewish people done to who? To the enemies. That was the plan of the enemies. That's what the Jewish people done to the enemies, as they wish. Whatever the enemies wish to do to the Jewish people, the Jewish people done to them. That's what is mean. It's not mean many people take that sentence and that verse and say as they wish. That's mean like the Jewish people enjoy to kill, to destroy, to annihilate children and kids, women. No. That's what the enemy wanted to do to us. That's what the Amalekim wanted to do to the Jewish people in 127 countries that was under the King of Hashbarot. Says Rabbi Shmuel de Ozida, as they wish, is exactly what the enemy wished and wanted to do to the Jewish people, the Jewish people done to them. And that's what we call the Nahapoku, and it's turned upside down. Exactly what they wanted to do to us, we done it to them. In verse 12, in chapter 9, verse 12, okay, it says something very interesting. Look now, there is a dialogue between King Ahasuerus to Esther Amalka. But that dialogue, we have to understand why the King Ahasuerus saying to Esther Amalka. What is he saying to her? It's very interesting, that dialogue. And it took me a long time to understand that. It, 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 it's something that uh, when I read it the first time, the second time, it took me quite a while to understand. And look what he said. Vayomer HaMelech לאסתר המלכה בשושן הבירה הרגו היהודים ועבד חמש מאות איש ואת עשרת בני המן אוקיי okay, בשאר המדינות המלך מה עשו sorry I think that yeah חמש מאות איש ואת עשרת בני המן בשאר מדינות המלך מה עשו ומה שאינתך ויינתן לך ומה בקשתך Verse 13. Verse 12. 12. 12. 12. 13 12. will do straight after that. Yes. 13 will do after that. Because it's one link to each other to explain exactly. it. Exactly. The king said to Queen Esther, In Shushan, the capital, the Jews have slain and annihilated 500 men as well as the ten sons of Haman. What must they have done in the rest of the king's provinces? What is your request now? It shall be granted you. What is your petition further? It shall be fulfilled. So, on a pshat of the Dvarim, we see that Hasbrosh telling Esther Malka that 500 people the Jewish kill in Shushan Abera. Until here we understand. Okay, and then he tell her that the 10th son of a man also been hanged on a gallow. Okay, but here come. 
בשאר המדינות, and the rest of the king, and the rest of the, the uh, what do you call it, the countries of the king, what did they done? And what do you ask? What do you wish? And that will be granted. We have to understand what's happening here. I saw a beautiful commentary of Rabbi Eliezer Ashkenazi in his, that we mentioned earlier in C4 in his book, Yosef Leka. And he said like this. He said, look how smart Esther Amalka. Look how smart Esther. And look what's cooking on here. In verse 3, we see how Esther using her smartness. The king of Hashverosh said to Esther Malka, look, in the city of Shushan, in the capital of Shushan, the Jewish people killed 500 men, 500 people. And they killed during the day. During the night, they stopped. Why? Because the Jewish people was worried what the rest of the, the nation going to say. Like what Al Jazeera going to say, BBC, CNN, and etc. What are they going to say? Esther kept quiet. He said, to her, but in the rest of the countries, the Jewish people killed from the morning until the following day for 24 hours. That's me. That in all the other provinces, all the other countries that underneath the king of Hasbaros, the Jewish people killed for 24 hours. Only in the capital of Shushan, they killed for 12 hours. Just before sunset, they stopped. Okay, until here, that's the interpretation of Rabbi Eliezer Ashkenaz. Come the Gaon review now. And he bringing a different reason why Esther Malka asking another day to kill in Shusha. He said like this. He said, you know that the lottery that Haman made, it was that on the 13th of Adar, that's going to be the day that they're going to kill, destroy all the Jewish people. That was the decree that a man given. Okay. So Esther Malka immediately realized what happened. That if she going to say anything to stop, it's going to be a disaster. Why? Because the, the second letters that a man said, it said to kill, to destroy, and to annihilate the Jews when? On a 13th of Adar. Okay. That she said to the man, to the king, you know, that's what's the plan. Is she said to him, look, let's change the letter. And I'm asking you to give us another 12 hours. What is those 12 hours? Dafka and Shushana Bira. Why? Because that was the capital. And everyone will see that you didn't only hang Haman. You also hang his 10 sons then everyone will realize that the letters that Haman Rasha sent, okay, to kill, to destroy, to annihilate the Jews, is not anymore working. So what did the Stera Malka done? Says, the Stera Malka was clever. What did she say in verse 13? And now we're going to understand how does it work. Until now was the preparation. Look what it said. In verse 13, Esther Malka saying like this. Vatomer Esther, in ala melech tov, inaten gam mahar la yehudim, asher beshoshan abira, laasot kedat hayom, veet aseret bene aman itlo ala etz. Esther replied, If it pleases his majesty, allow the Jews who are in Shushan to act tomorrow as they did today 
and let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. What exactly at the end? We have to understand. Esther now saying to Haman, to Melech Ahasuerus, listen, you telling me that in Shushan Abira, they killed only for 12 hours. I understand. But in the rest of the provinces, for 24 hours, they didn't stop killing the enemies of the Jewish people. My wish, my question is, my request is that allow them to continue killing for 12 hours where? In Shushan Abira. By that, that she asked for exemption of time to extend the time to kill the enemy of the Jews. Say, Hazal, you see the smartness, the cleverness of Esther Amalka. That means that she took what the Hashverosh said to her. What did the Hashverosh say to her? That in Shushana Berat they killed 500 people. But they stopped because they was worried what they're going to say in the news, what the world going to say, the BBC, the CNN, the Al Jazeera, and all of those um, people that hate the Jewish people. Say, Esther, uh -huh. he telling me that they killed only for 12 hours. And he asking me, what else? Immediately, what did she say? Give me a permission, allowed me to tell the Jewish people to continue to kill in Shushana Bira for the 12 hours that they didn't kill previously. Not only that, make sure that they're going to hang the children of Haman. What's the Hidush here? What's the Hidush? The Hidush here that was, like we say, that was maybe a chance that the people are going to say, listen, there is a decree that already been sent long before that, the second letters of Amman, that on the 13th of Adar, that's going to be a day that we're going to annihilate who? All the Jews. What did this tell say? Let's hang the 10 children of Amman. So everyone will understand that it was a plot of a man, like we wrote in a letter, in a third letter that Mordechai and Esther sent after that. That means that Esther planned everything. By that, that she given the extension, immediately she hanged the children of a man, said the Gaul Why? So people not going to have any doubt about the second letters. If they hang, not only that they hang a man, now they're hanging also the son. We can't do nothing on the 13th of Adar. What's happened? Look, the Jewish people also received extension that they can continue to kill, to destroy and to annihilate the enemies of the Jews. And that's the smartness. When you read these two verses, in chapter 9, verse 12 and verse 13, we have to understand the dialogue that there is between Ahasuerus and Esther Amalka, between the king Ahasuerus and the queen Esther. What gone through her mind? And here we see what Rabbi Eliezer Ashkenazi explained to us and what the Gaon Mebina explaining how was the dialogue, how beautifully Esther Malka saved the Jewish people and wouldn't give any doubt has shalom on a 13th of Adal. I would like to uh, go to chapter 9, verse 22. And actually here, we see something very interesting that the Megillah tell us. The Megillah tell us in verse 22. Basically, 
ומשלוח מנות. סורי, יש משלוח מנות איש לרעהו ומתנות לאביונים. I just lost it in a מגילה. סורי. בכבוד. אוקיי, so they're talking about the, that we're celebrating annually observing the 15th of Adar and it carries on 22 says, and the days on which, as the days on which the Jews gain relief from the enemies and the month which had been transformed for them from one of sorrow to gladness and from mourning to festivity. They were to observe them as days of feasting and gladness and for sending delicacies to one another and gifts to the poor. Okay, what's happening here? With that, I'm going to end up the, the, the Megillah, the commentary on the Megillah, because I want to do this coming Shabbos, Shabbat that we read, Parashat Vayikra, it's Parashat Zachor. So I want to do with you quick something also about Parashat Zachor, and I don't want to extend the time over. I want to try to stick to the time that we say. We didn't say, but usually I try to stick to one hour show. In this verse, we see something very interesting. That the Megillah tells us that the day of the Purim that been transformed from sadness, from all kind of bad thing, been transformed to joy and happiness. But what do we have to do? To give Mishloach Manot, Ishlerau, to give delicacy, one to each other. Not only that, to give tzedakah, matanot la'evionim. What's happening here? What's the Hidush here? We're talking about the man's that's been transformed from sadness, a man's that no one have any more hope. The Jews almost lost all the hope. It's been transformed to joy and happiness. And the next thing, you're telling me to send one each other Mishloach Manot. Not only that, you tell me to give Matanot Laevionim, to give Tzedakah to the poor people. What's the connection? I saw a beautiful Hidush that brought by Rabbi Shmuel de Ozida. Rabbi Shmuel de Ozida in his uh, Midrash, Midrash Shmuel, he explained like this. He said, Amal Rasha, what was his decree? Let's try to understand. He wanted to kill, to destroy, and to annihilate the Jewish people. Not only that, to take all their money. Okay? And what's happened? A miracle happened. The Jews given up. The money, they, all the heritage, all the belonging, all the position that they have, they give it up. They said, listen, anyway, we're going to has v'shalom. Say here, the Megillah come and tell you that because you're giving up on all your position, all your money, everything, because you're giving it up, you deserve to share it with other people. You deserve to share it with the Jewish people that poor, that need money. Therefore, the Megillah come and tell us not ish to give present to his fellow friend. What it means to give the legacy one to each other? We know that it's two, uh, two kind of food. Okay? But what's the Hedush behind? He said, because you Jewish already given up on all your money, all your position, now you have to share it with those that need. But not only that, you also have to share it with who? With your fellow friends. What are you going to do with your fellow friends? You're going to share the legacy. That means the beautiful food that you make, you share it with your fellow friend and vice versa with your friend. Another interpretation that brought the 
רבי שמואל דאוזידה אין איז מדרש, הוא אמר, תק את המילה אביונים, תק את המילה אביונים. אביונים בין ריטן ודאות דה לטס וו. בלאס וורד אינדאט וויס, we read it אביונים, אביונים is poor, but where is the וו? אסק רבי שמואל דאוזידה. I don't understand, where is that verb disappear? He said that here you learn something, you learn a Hiddush from here. And that what Paskin the Maran Shulchan Aruch. The Maran Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo, he born in the city of Toledo 535 years ago. And then from Toledo in Spain, during the Spanish Inquisition, him and his family fled and they came to Tzfat. And then he wrote the Shulchan Aruch. In Siman, in chapter 694, verse 3, Pasken de Maran Shulchan Aruch, that in Yom Purim, in the day of Purim, when you give tzedakah, you don't have to ask. You don't have to check who you're giving. Whoever asks, you give them. You give them, Tzedakah. Why? Because you people given hope and lost any hope, not only about your position, your money, everything. All your possession, you didn't even think that you're ever going to see it. So in that case, in Yom Purim, we give Tzedakah to everyone that want, without asking, without checking who he is, He asked, we give. Not only that, but I listen to that. Listen. I saw it in the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch adding up, Vegam notnin lagoim. He also give the Gentile in a place that he custom to give the Gentile. That means if it's a custom to give money to the Gentile on Purim, in your place, give it. But if not your custom, don't give it. Because we have a negative command to give tzedakah to a boy. But it's a velot tehonem. But it's not for now. Now I'm not going to deal with that. What do we learn from here? What was the idea of all of it? Say Rabbi Shmuel de Ozita. Here the Megillah teaches something very important. At the beginning, Haman Arasa said to, in chapter one, said to, Hashverosh, yesh no am echad, mefuzar u mefurat. They are spreaded, they are scattered, they're not united. What is the Megillah teach us? Now you're going to be united. Now you're going to live in unity and peace and love one with each other. That's mean. That's how you can overcome your enemy. And I'm going to link it also to Shabbat Zachor. About this coming Shabbos, we're going to read Shabbat Zachor. In Shabbat Zachor, we read in Sefer Dvarim and Parashat Ki Tetzel Lamin Chama, it said it like this, Timche et Zecher Amalek. You should annihilate the descendants of Amalek. That's Parashat Ki Tetzel, the last verse in chapter 25, the last verse of Parashat Kitetre, to annihilate the descendants of Amalek. I saw a beautiful commentary that been written in a book Imre Noam on Purim, on a Moadim. Imre Noam, it's a book that's written by Rabbi Orama Barjel. He born around 68 years ago, plus Manas in Moshav Brosh in the south, he passed away. זכר צדיק וקדוש לברכה, and say like this, it said it like this, it said take the word תמחה, תמחה it's to annihilate, okay, to annihilate the descendants of Amalek, the Torah tell us a command that we have an obligation to annihilate the descendants of Amalek, say רבי יורם אברג'ל זכר צדיק וקדוש לברכה on his book, He said, take the gematria of the word Zecher, the descendant. What is the gematria of Zecher? Let's do it together. Zayn is seven. Chav is 20. So far we're 27. 
Resh is 200. Together, 227. Amalek, what is the gematria? Ain is 70. Mem is 40, 110. Lamed is 30. Together, 140. Kuf is 100, 240. Say, take 214 minus 227. What you gonna get? 13. 13 yeah, gematria ahava, gematria ehad. That means that how can we destroy and annihilate Amalek? By that that we united, by that that we live in love, one with each other, that we love our fellow friends, a husband love his wife. We don't have parable. We live in peace, in unity together. Okay? By that, that we live in peace, in harmony, in unity together with love, that's how we can destroy Amalek. And now we can understand what's the secret of unity amongst the Jewish people. How important that we live in love, one with each other, to love each other, to respect each other. Not only that, not only that, the unity, the unity of the Jewish people. That's how we can destroy Amalek. The Mekubalim explained, Rabotai, that what is Amalek? If you look Amalek, what is Amalek? Amalek is exactly like a fly. Amalek couldn't kill any member of the Jewish people when he come to kill them. Why? Because they was protected with the cloud of glory. So who did he manage to kill? Those that was weak. Those Strange. that was anechshalim. Those that was weak. Those that was still unpure. Those that was idol worshipping from the tribe of Dan, those that was really didn't keep the holiness and the purity. That's mean when you allow a fly to fly to a broken skin, okay, or if there is has a wound, that's where the most, you see where the fly comes. You don't see the fly coming on the normal flesh. There's nothing to do. You all come and you fly away. But where is he stay and he clean and he hang into? Where there is a gap. Where there is all the time dirt and food. Said the Mekubalim, that's Amalek. Amalek always trying to find a gap. If there is a divide amongst the Jewish people, if the Jewish people doesn't live in peace and harmony and love together, that's where Amalek comes. That's where Amalek suddenly come and start licking them. Because Amalek, Milshon, Am, Lak. That means a nation that come to lick the Jewish people. What it mean to lick? Not to kiss them. It means like a fly to bug you. Like a fly bugging. When there is open food, you see them always there. You see a dustbin. Always you see them. Then, they're exactly like the United Nations, exactly the same. They find a gap all the time to cause problems. Say the Mekubalim, that's the secret of Amalek. Amalek, Klipata Zvuv. Klipa, it's the shell. Zvuv is a fly. Okay? It's kind of a term, Kabbalistic term to Amalek. What does it mean, Klipata Zvuv? That means the fools. The false, all the faulty, all the dirtiness, that's where you find Amalek. <laughs> and Be'ezrat Hashem, Rabota, that now that we know a little bit about the Megillah, that when we read it, Be'ezrat Hashem on Purim, it's going to give us a different way, different idea what we're reading, different understanding what we're reading. But we have to understand that the most important why we're reading, why it's a mitzvah from the Torah, okay, according to the Poskin, to listen 
to Parashat Zechor on Shabbat. Zechor et Asher Asalech Amalei. To remember that if we live in peace and unity together with love and harmony, Amalek cannot do anything to us. Amalek can penetrate and harm us when we're not united. We have to remember that. And that what it say annihilate the descendants of Amalek. Descendants Amalek. Remember, if we take and we minus it, left one, 13. 13, gematria ehad. 13, gematria ahava, love. Which means one is ehad, ahava is love. When we live together with peace and harmony and unity, Amalek cannot harm us. That's how we destroy him. And by Zerat Hashem, that we saw what's happening on the 7th of October. We all have to understand. You don't have to agree. You don't have to agree with certain things that happen. But we have to understand that if we in unity and love and peace, especially in those difficult times, that we see that all over the world, that's exactly what the prophet said that's going to happen. That 70 nations going to be against the Jewish people. And here, the prophet say it here. And the Zohar explained that in the end of the days, you see all of those 70 nations coming against the Jewish people. Now we see the true color of all of them. We see what the prophet said. Those that are going to destroy you. Okay? Those that are going to be against you, they're going to be inside you. And you hear what Dr. Les said. We see how many those people that call themselves Jews against the Jews. But how can we win all of them? When we live together in peace, in unity, in harmony, we love one with each other, the husband with his wife, the children, one with each other. That's the chokma. That's how we can annihilate Amalek. And Be'ezrat Hashem, now that we know the secret, that we should try to focus on that important thing. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will see that we live one with each other in peace, in unity, in love one with each other. And send us Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our day. Amen. Ken Yehir Atzon. Rabota, if there is any question, I hope that you enjoy the show first. If there is any question regarding the Megillah, I would, uh, Be'ezrat Hashem will try to answer if I can. So those of you that want to ask questions, please unmute the microphone and, um, and, we'll, and we'll try and answer the question regarding the Megillah Esther. Rabota, there's a lot of interesting questions that have been asked last Sunday, so I really recommend to listen to those questions. Yes, Bechavod, who's the first one to ask? I heard someone. Who Rabbi wanted to Frank. ask? Frank, Frank. Frank. How are you? Rabbi Shem, well, well. Are you feeling better? Much better, thanks. Thank. Good. Bechavod, Frank. Um, I'm a bit confused. Okay. How many letters went out? Two letters or three letters? Okay. Haman sent two letters. Yes. Okay. Right. Mordechai and Esther sent the last letter in the name of the king. Right. What is it? Okay. Yes. Haman Rasha, the first letter say, what did he say? that every woman have to obey her husband. And every right. woman have to speak the language of her husband. That was the first letter. You remember? Right. Yes, yes, yes. The second letters, after he done the lottery, he said to kill, to destroy, and to annihilate the Jews on the 13th of Adar. That was the second right. letter that he sent. Right. Then, after he'd been hanged, when I say him, I'm referring to a man. Decide a different era. Now, Mordechai and Esther 
came to King Ahasuerus and asked for permission to kill. After they kill, they also ask a permission to change the letter. And that was the letter that they sent exactly to contradict what Haman said in the second letter. You follow? Right. So then, okay. let's, yeah. so let's say in the second letter, they were supposed to kill all the Jews, correct? The second okay. letter. Okay. The third letter told the Jews to call, kill all the uh, other people, right? In all the countries. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if the Jews killed all the other people, or did they stop killing, or how many did they kill? If they annihilated everyone, there would be no one left. Or was no. there only... Oh, oh, oh. But because we d in, in that time, that yeah. after the first destruction, we didn't know who's the descendants of Amalek. We don't know mm -hmm. who's Amalek. Right. There is among us Amalekim, amongst us. Mm -hmm. Today, living with us, there yeah. is Amalek. After right. the destruction of the temple came Sanheri. Why they call him Sanheri? That he mixed all the nation, all the people. He took the 12 tribes and he spread them all over the world. Right. Until we don't know who's the descendants of Amalek. Okay. What they know, those the enemies of the Jews. That's what I say. I was very pacific. They didn't yeah. kill the Amalekim. They killed the enemy of the Jews. Right. You have to be okay. careful yes, yes. and to read between the lines. The seven, okay. very right. good question, Mr. Koa. Very, very Thank good you, question. Rabbi. Very good Thank question. You. Pleasure. Any other question? Well done. Good, good question. Good question, Frank. Uh, any other question, Rabotai? I heard someone wanted to ask a question. No question? No, no Rob, you, you, sorry. Yes, you, there is a, just like to ask you this. Um, Ken, the you mentioned that uh, they have already given up their money. They, they, they give They've given up on money. their money. They've given up on their money because they knew that they're going to, they not only on their money, money their yes. possession, all their possession, they knew that's going to be taken. Right. So up. now, so that they've given it up, they've got it. Now, the fact that we're going to give it up there, we must now use it for giving to the poor. That's it. To share it amongst us. To share amongst to teach us. us. By that that you sharing with your fellow friends, you show your love. You show your caring about one each other. That's the that's the Hidush. When you yes. send Mishloach Manot one to each other is to create love on a pshat of the dwelling. By that that you show your love you show also your unity to your fellow friends. So, so when you've now got the the unity, which you've just explained with the, the with the gematrias from Amalek, and then changed over to Echad to 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 love and unity, and and which is thirteen, the number thirteen, it's it's not coincidental that the thirteenth was the day in which all this. This took place. No, no, oh, beautiful. Yud Gimel Adar, the team that that's what? Yes. Love and heart. Beautiful. Shakur, well done, well done. Beautiful. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, I think that from now on you're going to write your own book. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. But you understand how's it all working? How's it all connected? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ruined interconnected. Yeah. Everything, okay. everything is in a Megillah. A door. Why they call it Megillah to stay? We explain on the first show that Megillah to stay means shown his hidden. The Megillah of hidden. Everything been written there in a hidden way. Like the name of the Almighty, you're not going to find in the Megillah. Yeah. But it's written in the Ekremen. Yavo, Yud, Hamelech, Kei, Vehaman, Hayom. Yud, Kei, Bab, Kei. 
Here's the name of the Almighty. Everything in the Megillah is been hidden. Everything, that's why they call it Megillat Hester. Hester, it means Shon Hester Panim. Also, in that time, Akadosh Baruch Hu hidden himself from the Jewish people. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And that's what came the decree. And that's when he came to them. Well, you know, we come up to Purim now. Uh, it seems like Hashem has actually hidden his face at the moment from us. Uh, we, we know it's there. We know Hashem is there all the time, but we don't understand it. And it's hidden just as, as Purim has, was such a salvation for us. It's a shame. It, 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 we Hashem should have it now. The salvation, this Purim. Oh. Yeah. Any other question, Rabotai? Any other question? I hope that first of all, I hope that you enjoy the commentary on the on the Megillah. I hope that it's given you a different way to look at it. Because every year for the last I looked at my all my uh, shorim that I write, I saw for the last at least 10 years that I'm giving those shorim. I definitely all the time I change. I've given a different perspective completely about the show. So Baruch Hashem, we're managing and Be'ezrat Hashem, the Takadosh Baruch will give us the strength, the chokhmah, the wisdom to understand and to teach. Lil Mod, first of all, to listen. Lishmoa, Lil Mod, to, to learn. And to pass it on, Be'ezrat Hashem. But I hope that that will give you a different way to look at the Megillah and Hagapurim. In the meantime, I would like to wish all of you, Rabotai, to wish all of you a beautiful week, a safe week, that Be'ezrat Hashem will see only miracle Be'ezrat Hashem. Okay. Wish you all Shavua Tov, Umvorach, a beautiful week ahead to all of us. And we should all see, please God, Quickly, miracle. Amen, Kenny Ratzon. That's the most important. Okay, Rabotai, have a good You're night. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoy it. Have a good night, everyone. Uh, good night. Uh, good night.